Like all this inflation we saw right now, the inflation, the inflation right now, inflation is as low as it's going to be. If we get a little lucky, oil might go down a tiny bit. But outside of that, it just like look, look at all the stuff that's going on. Well, look at all the stuff because we're on. Um, look at all the stuff that's going on right now with the, all the Sandman attacks and stuff, and the the BRIC nations. The BRIC nations are pretty trash nations. Let's be for real, right? That's um, why they're that's why they're getting together, right? Because they yeah. they know the there's a little bit more strength in numbers, right? They know they can't do it individually. So I think this time around, like, and with Saudi Arabia kind of backstabbing the United States and all these things are getting uppity and stuff. Who knows what the United States is going to do and what the United States might allow people to mm. do and who they end up um, arming this time around. Mm. So there's, a lot, you know, it doesn't take much. It takes a war where the United States are not a part of, but a lot of the countries that supply oil are a part of to have oil prices just spike up like crazy, mm. which then will drive prices even higher from there. So uh, interesting, interesting sort of stuff, man. But let's finish that video, man. Let's. I want to I want to rehear this part again. This is, this is pretty crazy different possible ramifications. And I, I think the answer is basically, I don't I don't think there's likely to be any important interaction between the two because I believe Congress will wind up acting and as it, as it will and must in the end to raise the debt ceiling in a way that doesn't risk, you know, the progress we're making against inflation and the economy and the financial sector. I believe that that will happen. I believe it will happen. You know, it, we, we of course will monitor money market conditions carefully uh, it, as you know, as the process moves on, for example, the, the Treasury General account will shrink down and then it will grow back up. And we understand there'll be lots of flows between there and the overnight repo facility and, and reserves. We, we understand all that. We're watching it uh, carefully. We'll just be monitoring it. Interesting. Right. Now we're going to go to another stream. Now we're going to go to one more video as well. This one is where he's he's getting he's getting brought up in front of Congress and he's getting kind of I wouldn't say reamed, but more of like they're kind of using him. To, they're, they're they're like they're trying to use him as like a political pawn in a way to like please explain to the please explain to the crowd why the Republicans are bad. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, it's our favorite lady. And what, what are the dates on both of these videos? Just for um, everybody to the, know. The, the last one was about two months ago. This is about a month ago and some change. So it's like the, the, these are both, these videos are both a month apart. So mm -hmm. within a two 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 months and some change ago, he ends up he ends up uh, saying this on um, I think I live streamed it and stuff where we reacted to it where he said, "Hey, you guys, the um, the Federal Reserve it can't save the economy if you guys don't like it. Doesn't matter if you guys don't." stop messing around and increase the debt ceiling we can't we can't save this economy so we you basically like you raise the freaking debt ceiling stop making it political is what he's basically what he said and now both sides are trying to you know you know the left is trying to make it sound like you know he was so, so tell the tell the country why the republicans are holding it up and, and putting our country into danger and he <laughs> I'll, I'll let you decide on that chair Powell, i agree with what you and of course, it's Miss Waters. Of course, <laughs> oh, the, most honest, lady. <laughs> the most honest uh, person on Capitol Hill for sure. Dude, her finger, her fingers creep me out, dude. Like when she points her, she points her fingers out. I sound like, geez, dude. It looks, it looks, it's pretty rough. I don't think I've ever noticed. <laughs> Interesting. You said on February first that Congress must raise the debt limit because of what you described as the highly risky consequences of failing to do so. You are perhaps the most important expert on the debt limit, which is why I find it very concerning that your recommendation to raise the debt limit in a timely manner is being ignored by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Jesus Christ. No, this shit, the, the reason we're in this is because both of you guys messed this up and printed money and did all this crap. It's... It's not a left or right thing. It's both of y'all corrupt motherfuckers yeah, <laughs> on both same, sides. Same wings of the same fucking bird. Right. Now, what, what, what? why are they lagging on the debt ceiling, right? Because when they increase the debt ceiling, they also, when they increase the debt ceiling, they also put things in there like we're going to X mets, we're going to add some extra spending for this and this. So basically, this is, this is back in the day, we used to balance the budget, which means it's like, this is how much we're spending for the government for the next year or for this year. Cool. But now the raising of the debt ceiling has now become a brand new thing. Like it's become the brand new, we get to print extra money and we get to fund new programs. So this is kind of like balancing the budget, except we're always going to have the budget bigger. 
permanently. That's what, so they, they really need to change the word of this whole thing. Basically like, Hey, yeah, it's a new year. So we get to spend more money. So we, we have to allocate more funds into more stuff, government programs. Mm -hmm. So right now with what the Republicans are doing, but as well as like the, the liberals and stuff they're they're adding certain things. So certain, so certain people in their party and stuff get benefits and stuff. So there's probably, there's probably extra spending on oil. There. There's probably some extra spending in um on climate change bullshit. You know, it's, it's a lot of that sort of stuff. So there's, that, that's the reason why they're like filibustering right now. It's, it's crazy, you know, Never forget this woman called for violence. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Fresh and Fit, man. Ugh. I'm also concerned that the consequences of this brinksmanship are imminent. Fitch Ratings said this week uh, they may seriously look at downgrading the U.S. debt based on the escalating brinksmanship they are observing. Even if Congress ultimately addresses the debt limit, at the last minute. This is history repeating itself. Standard and Poor's downgraded our debt back in 2011 when Republicans last controlled the House and threatened default. Now, I will say one thing. I feel like that was more of a stunt, right? So Standard and Poor's mm -hmm. like lowered the, you know, the ratings on the, you know, the credit limit for the United States of the, the United States government, but it was because all these all these agencies in the last financial crisis we're basically they people lost confidence in all these because all these guys basically said this is a triple A rated bond, you guys, to every piece of shit that they could possibly manufacture. Triple and then a bullshit. <laughs> so basically, in order for them to look like you know, save some face, what they did is like, oh fuck, what can we do? We're lowering the credit weatherness of the United States government. And then and then that's how they that's what they kind of use as their thing. It's like, you see, you know, the United States has been doing this fuck shit for too long. You know, where we lowered them from an A plus plus to an A plus now. Mm. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And I, I remember if I remember at the time, they actually increased the credit readiness of, of Russia as well. Like a couple months, a month later. It, my memory, my memory is this is like a long time ago. This might be like 2009 or eight. But um just crazy shit, you guys. Just real crazy sort of stuff. But like, don't fall for all this jargon and stuff like that. They, that was like a political. That was more of like a move to save their asses so people take them seriously or whatever. Just because there's like, just like, just like in a lot of other chats, there's a lot of anti-America stuff. So a lot of a lot of people who were buying because back in the day, a lot of foreign countries would actually buy U.S. debt. You're having less and less countries over time buying U.S. debt and stuff. So you're at, right now, what's going on? The a lot of the buyers are Americans as well as American banks and corporations and. Um, up, 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 and uh, retirement funds are buying U.S. debt and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, you still you still have a lot of other nations buying debt and stuff like that. But it's 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 not as much as it used to be. As well as um, you know, China would buy a lot of our debt and stuff, and that's not really the case as much anymore. Yeah, they they don't want to if they don't have to. 